Go. We are live. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How is everybody? <laughs> Let us know where you're based and let's shout you out because yeah. I'm seeing some really cool comments. Praveen is the first time uh, joining us at Bassent Blast Live. Thank you for coming. Nice. And also, right. um, Greg's birthday as soon as he tells us in the comments. Happy ver early birthday. Happy Greg. birthday. <laughs> How is everybody doing? Let us know where you're based. Jerry, how are you doing today? I'm good. So good. I bought and got my car yesterday. And I'm super excited because as soon as I'm done with my meetings today, I'm going to just go out there and just start driving. Amazing. That's yeah, such yeah. a great way to start your Saturday. But yeah, we got Martin over here. Hey, Martin. Martin, my boy. Oh, what's the, what's good, Martin? I love his photo. <laughs> Look, he's such a smiley guy. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Winnie from the Bay Area. What's up, Winnie? Felicia from West Palm. Felicia. LA. Amazing. Cool, cool. I always awesome. love spending my Saturdays with everybody, but everybody, Jerry is an incredibly busy person and we love the fact that he's spending his Saturday and his valuable time with us. So um, if you're excited to hear Jerry speak, I'm, I'm low key fangirling by the way, but uh, let us know in the comments. Let's uh, like hype Jerry up and say hashtag just Jerry because uh, he's incredible and we're very, very excited. I'm honestly so blessed and honored to be here. I know that Basant is huge, so I'm glad that you have even played a small part here. Um, it says yeah. Jerry, but... <laughs> What's up, Cherie? Cool. Ooh, Sherry, how's it going? Love that. Right. right, so let's kickstart. Um, yeah, you know, it's been a tough year. Uh, for everybody. And I think in terms of job search and career, career in general, everyone's so like, let's do what we can right now. Let's work incredibly hard, which is awesome. But I think a lot of right. us are forgetting to take care of ourselves, forgetting the mental health aspect. And who better to bring on to the webinar than just Jerry, uh, who speaks a lot about this. And we speak about this a lot. We're both very passionate about this. Right. Um, so for anyone who somehow does not know who you are, can you introduce yourself, please? <laughs> sure. So my name is Jerry. Uh, I think a lot of people may know me through LinkedIn, but uh, I uh, a little bit about my background. So I grew up in the LA area, spent a lot of my life there, went to the Northeast for college, started off my career at Google, did product analytics there, then transitioned to a business strategy role. And I recently left my role uh, for a new job, which I'll be announcing soon. And I am also the COO of one salty. So I work with Jonathan almost way too much, but, uh, he's, he's a, he's like a brother to me. And, um, I am so excited here to talk to you guys a little bit about my story and the imposter syndrome, because that is absolutely, absolutely so important. It is, it is. And just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Basend. I'm an incoming BOP associate and a career coach, but uh, Jerry's a lot cooler than me, so we'll focus on him today. <laughs> I um, took all my playbook from uh, Basant. Nah, not true. Um, <laughs> right, so it's going to be a super interactive webinar. That's how I like to do it here. So make sure throughout the session, we're going to do like three main topics. And in the middle, we're going to have time for questions. So if you ever in the middle have a question, just write in the question and then and whatever question you may have, just so we make sure to see it. And just quickly before we start, I am partnering with an incredible organization called Correlation One that are giving free training in data science to people and then Ooh. getting people uh, jobs at big companies like Google, Amazon, etc. So if you do want free data science training and then just infinite job opportunities for yourself, make sure to check this link. Um, I will also put it in the description, but it's such a cool opportunity, especially now to 
upskill and also in general just get some cool job opportunities. So it is also in the chat, so make sure you see that. But yeah, we will let get me started. let me constantly click on this link here so that it's uh... <laughs> Jerry always being supportive. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> but yeah, we will kickstart right like right into it. And Let's do it. Syndrome is tough. So I know both Sorry. of us come from immigrant backgrounds, which can be right. um you get kind of a limitation mindset, I think, a lot of the time because you you come from a background that is limiting you to some extent. So can you tell us about your journey just far, you know, in university and going up to, you know, your role to Google? How were you kind of feeling inadequate and just like as an, an imposter in general? Yeah, that's such a good question. Um, so a little bit about me for those people who don't know. So I come from a low income first generation background, right? And uh, I also come from an immigrant family. And so when I was starting college, uh, I went to Babson College, which is a small private business school in the Northeast where uh, most of the students come from middle upper class. And it was the first time in my life where I began to be surrounded by people who really, who, who really didn't have money as like a problem, right? And so right off the bat, I felt like I was completely out of place because I remember I had like $150 in my bank account. And the first time I went out to eat, I remember I spent $25. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, like that was such an expensive meal. But for these guys, they're just like, yeah, like it's, uh, it's, it's just like an average day. Right. And I love that you guys are saying yourself like, yeah, first generation immigrant, let me know if you guys are first gen immigrants or uh, low income please feel free to type that in the chat. Let's see that. I want to, I want to acknowledge you guys and show you guys that you guys are worthy and you guys are amazing. Um, but in terms of how that's made me feel throughout my entire college career, I've always felt like out of place and I never felt like I belonged because the people went on vacations, people would go to private schools. I just didn't do any of that growing up. And so, and secondly, when I was interning at Google, the second place when I uh, felt the imposter syndrome was actually when I was interning. Everyone else was from an Ivy League grade schools. You know, we had like 10 kids from Harvard, like eight from Yale. And I, we had one from Babson College. And that was me. You know, just, it just, I just felt so, so out of place because these kids just had similar backgrounds as I did. And again, that's where I felt out of place. And so those are the two points in my life where I truly felt like they for sure made a mistake. I do not belong. And I love how you guys are calling yourselves out first gen, low income, right? I hear yeah, you. I acknowledge proud. you guys. <laughs> you guys should be proud because you guys are have are gonna have such a spark and an emote and such a drive that no one else can have. So I respect uh and I respect you guys so much. I love that. Yeah, and thank you so much for sharing that. You know, I think having so many mentors and you know people i really respect i always look to people you know like jerry jonathan everyone i'm like man they must feel like so put together all the time and i think it's important to share like in general all of us that you know a lot of the time we feel out of place we feel like we're not good enough we feel like i don't i, I don't belong here exactly like you said and you know i also went to a private university here in germany and also a private high school and in general i wow. I did not feel like I belonged. And I felt like because of these limited resources, I wasn't going to make it. So mm. I'm really excited about our chat just because of that. And it's it's really tough in general, but it's important that we speak about this and Absolutely. we don't let these things limit us. I always say like these circumstances, whether you're an international student, first gen, immigrant, you define who you are more than anything. And I think it's important to kind of have that power more than anything and yeah in terms of in general how was your job search affected i'm also really interested in that you know what was interesting about my job search is that my freshman year is when i truly realized that i am so far behind um i remember kids in my hall would be like yeah i just got an internship at ey or hey i just got an internship at mckinsey or goldman right and i was like what are those companies and the more I researched them, I was like, Jesus, they're like the like top of the top, right? Who here in the chat has felt that way? Who here in the chat has felt like, oh my God, like all these people are getting internships, but I don't even know how to wear a suit, right? Because for me, like, I remember I was just like, Jesus, like, I don't know a single thing about job search, right? 
And I figured that I was like, wow, like because I was so far behind, I didn't know where to start, but it was through organizations and mentors who kind of helped me understand what was, what is like the ideal way for me to go about this, right? Winnie, Simran, right? Like Parth, right? Like Inez or Ainz, right? Like exactly. Um, but you know, one of the one of the interesting things that I think the, in my immigrant background has has, has solidified in me is that I adopted a philosophy earlier on, and thankfully that I did that if all that if other people can do it like so can i right and so because i've always had that philosophy ingrained into me it felt like it, it felt like an easy way for me to just copy what other people have have been doing right and and so that's the way i initially tackle my job search that people would be like yeah i got an internship at accenture i'm like oh my gosh like congratulations like how'd you guys do it to like, oh, hey, I was part of this organization. I met a recruiter. I'm like, oh, perfect. Well, I'm going to just go reach out to 100 recruiters and see if I can try this out. Right. So that's the way that I tackle job search. I honestly just copied other people because I had the mentality of like, oh, if other people can do it, like, so can I. Yeah, I love that. That's so important. Instead of, I know it's so tough to look at LinkedIn sometimes when there's so many other people who are accomplishing so much. And that makes you also feel like, am I doing something wrong? What's happening here? But they're tagging recruiters. They're tagging all kinds of people who are helpful to them. It's an opportunity for you if you look at it a bit differently. And I, I really love that positivity. And, you know, when I was interning at Intel, I never even thought about full-time roles at Google or Facebook or any of the big tech companies because I was just like, eh, that's not even – like, it's not even that I thought, okay – I'm not going to apply there because I'm not good enough. That didn't even go into my peripheral. Like I didn't even right. think I could even do that. Yeah. And I think it's so important to not limit yourself to that extent where you're yourself kind of taking away your own opportunities. It's important that if you think you can, if you can dream it, I always say you can do it. So it's so important to get rid of this. I'm not good enough mindset as hard as it is. Yeah. And you know, what's the most fascinating thing after working with thousands of college students and young professionals is that, they're all they're the ones who tell me that they can't get into their dream jobs they're the ones who are like yeah well like that i just can't get into google i just can't work at facebook that's just that's just too much right yeah like like similar like i still cannot aim for these roles right like absolutely you can absolutely you can right the reason why you can is because at the end of the day they're hiring you not for who you are today or not for who you are five years ago, but who you're going to be in the future. And as long as you can demonstrate that, wow, like that's the potential that you see from that person. That's what hiring decisions are based off of. Mm -hmm. It's it's exactly the same when I'm working with students as well. They tell me like I've spent this entire university thing, like not looking that's for right. experience. My mm -hmm. grades aren't good enough. I think we're, we could tend to be a bit in our own heads, right? Mm -hmm. When I think the last thing on a recruiter's mind is your grade. I think sometimes they are looking at that. But you, if you yourself are limiting yourself in that sense, you're taking away so many opportunities from yourself. Exactly. It's, 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 it's like, don't do that to yourself, honestly. Exactly. But, um, like, but don't, be, don't reject yourself. Let the companies reject you. Yeah, that's already bad enough. To be yeah. honest, you will get a lot of rejections as is. Right, so don't do right. it yourself. Uh, because if you don't go for sh the shots, you're going to just go through 0% of a success rate in general instead of a 50% rate, which is a lot higher. So it's important in that sense to kind of do you, do what you can, and then do your best, right? But That's right. How does one have belief in oneself, Jerry? It's so difficult if you're already limiting yourself. How can you push past that, essentially? Honestly, I think it's you need you need champions, mm. right? Like uh, for me, my my parents didn't really know how to accept or how to help accelerate my professional career, right? Like they didn't know like a resume, they didn't know how to like interview, they didn't do all that stuff. But like what they did do was, I remember when I was a freshman or sophomore in college, I remember I like 
came into uh, my dad's room and I was like, hey, like, I just found about BCG, Boston Consulting Group. Like, they pay so much money. I'm going to get an internship with them and I'm going to buy you guys a house. It's going to be so great. Right. And come to realize that, like, hey, getting to BCG is really tough. Uh, but that didn't stop me from applying when I was a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. I got rejected all four times. If you're a BCG recruiter, please slide in my DMs. Okay. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, but one thing I, I realized from that is that even though my parents didn't know about BCG, nor the, or even if they did, they didn't, they, they don't like Jerry, like, come on, that's not for you. Right. They were just like, yes, like <laughs> get Jerry to BCG. <laughs> we gotta do it. We gotta do it now. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, but my parents were my my parents were my champions. They were my first champions. They're still on my champions today. Uh, and they're always the ones to say, to say, Hey, like, Hey, you can do more. You can, you can do it. You can accomplish your goals. Right. And so for, if you're struggling with self-confidence, if you're struggling with, with that, right. Like find that group of champions, right. Whether that's Passant, whether that's us, whether that's whomever, right. Like you need to have those champions for you to feel like, wow, like I'm doing it. Right. And I think, and I think for me, like, I'm just not blessed with, like, the, me the mental capacity to, like, self-believe self in myself and be like, hey, I can do everything. I can do all this, right? And so for me, I have to have my community of supporters. And for me, the first community of supporters were my family. I love that. And, you know, if you find that your family may be uh, – doesn't understand <laughs> recruitment in general – Look towards your beyond your family as well. Your friends, maybe they also have advice that can be helpful. Look right. towards, you know, when I thought I was incapable of doing things, a mentor at work like looked me in the eye and she was literally like, "Go do the crazy thing, percent. Go work in a startup, move away, go to a big company, just do the crazy thing right now, and I'll just pass on that information. Go do the crazy thing, do whatever you can to get to your goals and." Um, it's so important, though, to have a group of people, mentors or people who are just supportive. So um, I remember in college, I had no one that was supportive. It was just such a competitive college. In general, people would rather crush you than support yeah. you more than anything. And that really affected my career prospects. For the longest time, I didn't even think I was capable of doing anything because it was just like <clears throat> such a tough environment. And you know what I did? I just went on LinkedIn honestly. And it was the start of my life changing because I just surrounded myself with people who were so supportive and in general, just so helpful. So yeah. if you are in an environment that's a bit toxic, do your best to get out of it because it changes you beyond how you consciously think it does. So yeah. it, it is important that you get yourself out of that. So important. yeah. And I mean, the fact that 70 people are watching on a Saturday morning, afternoon, night, or maybe even Sunday, right? The fact that you guys are spending time on a weekend for you to un learn a little bit about my career, right? Some random guy's career and Basant's career, right? It's so incredible to see that, 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 that first of all, like you guys care about your careers, right? And the second thing is that you guys just want to grow. And so for me, I think that jobs, job, career, success, all that is a function of effort and, and how much you care, Right. Because at the end of the day, if you put in the time to accept feedback for you to just hear people out, take advice, use those advice, keep iterating, there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to be able to get into any companies in the long term, right? And the fact that you guys are here today, the fact that you guys showed up tells me that you guys care, right? And so that's what I would say that at the end of the day, like, like I don't believe my myself to be a genius, right? Like, I don't believe my coworkers at Google were geniuses, right? And absolutely, some of them were. But, like, I believe that they just cared a ton and put a lot of effort towards towards their career. And that's just what I see with the people I work with. I love that. It's uh, we're, we're, No one is an alien, right? Or a more a smarter species or anything like that. We all have the same things that are possibly tying us down or empowering us. It's just a matter of who bypasses imposter syndrome, who pushes through it and just makes it to the other side. Because I think that's ultimately what makes the difference. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And Simran asked a really good question that I do want to quickly address because uh, 
Simran just mentioned, how do you, how do we not give up when nothing is showing results? How do we adapt our approach so that we do get results on applications? Simran, I think I, I had this mentality for a long time and I said, wow, I'm not getting job interviews. I'm helping other people land their careers. Who am I to help others if I can't land my own offers? Mm. Right. But I think what you have to realize is that every time you get on the phone with a recruiter, every time you get feedback from someone, right? That is progress. And you have to count those as wins, right? Because a thousand people would kill to be in your shoes, to be on a call with a recruiter, be on LinkedIn, be connected to recruiters, right? You have to make sure you count those wins and don't focus on your losses. In this, pre in this previous recruiting cycle, I made a series of posts that shared that, hey, I um, interviewed at 10 companies in six weeks, right? What I didn't say is that I reached out to about 2000 people and only about 30 responded or 50, 40 responded, right? Because if I, if I shared that, I said, Hey, I have a 1.7% uh, reply rate guys, right? That is not, that is not something to be proud of. I don't want to say, Hey, I got rejected and ghosted by over 2000 people guys. That is not something I should be. And that could really wear, wear, wear down on me, and that really has. But people like Jonathan, right, just kept motivating me, being like, hey, like, you can't focus on the negatives, right? Like, why are you focusing on all the negatives of the things that hasn't happened? Why aren't you focusing on the things that have happened, right? And so for Simran, I really recommend that you focus your attention and time on the wins. Write them down of any time you get a connection request, any time you get a uh, referral, every time you get a call, right? Those are all 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 wins and you should absolutely celebrate them absolutely i think the biggest thing with imposter syndrome is you forget all your accomplishments and everything exactly. you've ever done in life and you're just focusing on this one end goal i used to for the longest time i used to think celebrating was only worth it at the finish line when every step is an accomplishment absolutely. everything even going backwards and learning something new about how you can make it to the goal needs to be celebrated. Otherwise, Absolutely. you're just putting yourself down, unfortunately, and that does affect your prospects moving forward. But we do have a really good question from Chris who asks, how do you overcome imposter syndrome in the classroom? I found myself comparing my grades to peers a lot, especially since entering a higher level like engineering course. What do you think, Gary? So I think um, in the classroom, I th Chris, I think that's absolutely real. That is so, so true. And I'm going to be real with right now. It does not stop at the classroom. It continues in your career. It continues in uh, every project that you'll do. It'll, it's, it's a never ending battle of competition to see who's better, who's not, who does a little, who has more knowledge. And so I think just first realizing that it never goes away, I think is the first step. Mm. The second step is then to realize, well, if it doesn't go, go away, then how do I, how do I shape my thinking around it? Right. And so you can either look at it from two different lenses, right? You can either look at it saying, wow, in a negative lens and say, wow, I'm so bad and I don't deserve to be here. I don't understand why I'm here, right? Because I'm not doing as well. Or you can view it in the other lens to say in a more opportunistic way and say, hey, because these other people are doing it, I can also learn how they're doing it as well. Right. And so solve it as if you would solve any other math, physics, chemistry, writing problem. Right. Figure out, well, why is it that I'm not learning as much? And if you don't go talk to your professors, go talk to mentors, go talk to the kid who has 100 percent his class or her class. And there's definitely people who do. Um, and so you just want to see just see what works for them and see whether or not or see how you can adapt. Yeah, I love that. You know, Simran from the last question is actually saying, I got two referrals last week. I'm celebrating. Let's go, tomorrow. Simran. Okay, I see you. Nice. I love that. Simran. Let's go, Simran. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, and you know, if anyone has small wins, that's already a really big win, actually. Share them in the comments. Let's highlight them. Let's celebrate each other more than anything in these very tough times. And, you know, that that's incredible, Simran. We're so proud of you. Yeah. And yeah, the next topic we wanted to speak about is selling yourself with confidence. How do you do that? And I know uh, I'm a very big fan of your posts, Jerry. And I know for the longest time you were pretty young compared to your coworkers at Google. And that also made you feel like almost of an imposter. How did you bypass mm -hmm. that and like get confidence in general in speaking to people who are older than you? I just never told anyone my age. 
<laughs> it's just as simple as that. I remember, uh, so I got into my strategy role when I was 23, and the next youngest colleague that I could find on my team was like 29 or 28, right? And so from a number of working experience perspective, you're talking about a guy who is one years old versus seven, eight, 10, 15, 18 years, right? And so the way that I handled this was um, I just, the third, the way, the, the way that I dealt with this was I just asked questions, right? Um, what you'll s soon realize when you work with executives, when you problem solving, when you're doing partnerships, um, what you do is the people who can ask the best questions or the people who can ask questions are the ones who are the most successful traditionally. In strategy roles and product management roles, those are the roles and executive roles if you can ask the tough questions, you're going to be the person to just learn more. For me, thankfully, I was just a very curious person. And so I would constantly be asking these questions, being like, hey, guys, sorry, I'm just a rookie here. I just started. But can you guys explain why are we doing this? Right. And oftentimes you'll hear like, um, we're, uh, <laughs> we're doing this because, uh, right. And so as long as you're the person to just ask questions, right? Just, just absorb, right? I think that's the way that you actually sell yourself because then you no longer become the person who is that shy Asian immigrant, first generation low income professional that no one wants to work with, right? And I think I find that asking questions is typically the best way for you to at least ease yourself into a situation like that. And the way that you make your stand out because nobody in the meetings asks those questions. If you can be that person to just ask questions and say, sorry guys, I'm just asking to my own personal knowledge. I'm sorry if you've already gone over this, we can skip over it, but blah, 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 blah. Right. If you can do that, absolutely. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And you know, what really stood out to me in the beginning of the convo when you were answering the question is you mentioned, I don't mention my age myself. Yeah. And I think a lot of job searchers or people in general in their career, We'll always start the set the sentence with you know i don't have that much experience but i can learn instead of saying i have what it takes and i think language and how you utter things is so important in yeah. that sense is you're already writing yourself off in the way that you are speaking about yourself and how you are selling yourself and when you do that you're already like reducing your chances because if you don't have the confidence how is the other person supposed to believe in you as well so I really love that. And I really appreciate that you shared that with us. But confidence comes from within more than anything. And, you know, in my freelancer work these past few months, I've also worked with people who are like twice my age coming to me for advice. And for the longest time, I said, like, well, I, I am scared right. of giving bad advice or I'm scared I'm not good enough for this job, especially because of my age. And I realized I do have something good to say. I do have good advice for people. Otherwise, they wouldn't be coming to me for advice also so it's important to also trust the company trust the people who are speaking to you trust all of that they see some potential in you and you need to believe in yourself more than anything otherwise no one else will also put in that effort yeah absolutely and the other thing that i'll add is that i think i just had a brain fart <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get to it but by the way i am just so awesome like it is just so awesome to see everyone sharing so much support for each other. Like mm -hmm. it is so incredible. Like Mina, congratulations for getting a job as a cloud engineer at SAP, but you're still on this, like, and still just trying to learn more about careers. Like that is so awesome for you. Patrick, congratulations for getting a referral for the first time. Clara, congratulations for starting working as a recruiting intern. Made your first three placements this week. That is incredible to do that when you first start working at a company. Um, you guys are just, you guys are just awesome. And Basan, Patrick, you... Patrick actually asked for a referral this week and the person said they normally don't do it, Let's but go, Patrick. Up, through selling himself, he got the referral. That's amazing. Patrick. I, I, I love, love that. that. I love that. Um, yeah. yeah. Give people a reason to want to support you, show them that passion, show them that interest. That's when people, that's how you sell yourself. So that's Patrick right. is like a perfect example of that. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Right. Um, did the brain fart go away, Jerry? No, or, it's still, okay. still there. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> but yeah, in the middle of your job search, especially when you did have imposter syndrome, did you have any specific kind of 
pro tips or something that you were able to sell yourself with or something that like stands out? That's a good question. I think for me, I always latched onto one small fact to mm. one small or one victory that I'm the most proud of that reminded me, hey, I am worth it. Right. So to give you guys some context. So when I was applying for roles uh, recently, I only had three years of working mm. experience, but I was applying for roles and reaching out to people for roles that were five, eight years of experience, maybe even 10. Right. And so the, the, even though that I was competing with, like, I remember there's this one role that I was interviewing for, I was competing against Wharton MBAs and people who were in their mid thirties. Right. So there were 10, 15 years into their career. Mm -hmm. And even though I got cut, the fact that I even had the opportunity to compete with someone at that age to me was a huge reminder to myself like dang like wow that is that is a huge accomplishment for me so i think it comes goes back to the fundamentals of hey like appreciate the small wins that you have getting an interview hopping on the phone with a call with a recruiter right literally writing them down to remind yourself that you are making progress because the thing that i always say is that you the recruiting process is such an emotional process Recruiting is so emotional. You are fighting through a hundred no's for you to get one maybe. Then you're searching through a, a hundred of those maybes for you to get one yes, right? And so just know that the recruiting process is such an emotional process by nature because it is so geared towards failure, mm. right? Failure is so common in the recruitment process. And so you have to make sure you fight through all the negatives for you to see the positives. And if you can have that positivity, again, like my, my philosophy on recruiting is that if you spend the time, it's only a function of time and effort, right? As well as the third axis of, uh, of taking feedback, right? If you can do those three things really well, I promise you, you're going to land your job for sure. Love, uh, Mic drop just right there. <laughs> Love that. Thank you for sharing that with us. Right. And you know, the one thing that really helped me is first, I went in with facts because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people tend to think very emotionally during the job search, completely normal with everything going on in the world right now. But go in with facts to back up what you're saying. Go in with like, I was able to increase this by this much. Go in with accomplishments. So you yourself cannot like disregard them they're facts try. no one can take that away from you so try and think a bit factually instead of emotionally in terms of what impact you created and i think that will make a difference Absolutely. and i think especially in my job search i had a lot of anxiety through the whole thing and i was always nervous. God, yeah but what made the difference with me is i was the kindest person no one could take that away from me either and i also went in the most research so if you notice that you're you're feeling a bit inconfident in yourself go in well researched as if you are the best person that they can hire be the kindest person and build relationships with people and i really think that will make all the difference in the whole um process exactly but if anyone has any questions let me see if we have we had a bit of questions in the phone i saw a question from Sa sayali asking any tips for inexperienced new graduate job search um I'm assuming that question means for if you're a new graduate and you don't have much experience, I would say a couple things. One is figure out what what field are you interested in, right? First, when you figure out the field that you're interested in, it makes everything else easier. And I think the biggest problem I see with people is they go, but Jerry, I have so many interests. I am so interested in finance, marketing, and sales, and product management. I can't ever choose one. Then I would say, then start stack ranking. They're like, oh my gosh, Jerry, but I can't choose. But then I'm like, literally just throw, like, like write them down on a piece of paper, drop a coin, wherever it lands, that's what you're going to start with, right? Because it's so important for you to have that focus because if you don't have that focus, you're essentially going to be average at all those roles, right, when you're recruiting. So make sure you have a focus. The second thing is identify, once you identify the career that you're interested in or starting with, find what you need to have in that role. If you need uh analytical experience so you don't have analytical experience perfect well go create your own project right or go volunteer at a nonprofit and ask them if they need analytic support right um do just get a way for you to get that experience on your resume and once you have that then start going and recruiting and seeing what other people say about your resume and your experience 
get that feedback, then start up reaching out to hiring managers, recruiters, and keep moving forward. Love that. And you know, we're getting some crazy, amazing stories in the comments. Jenny just landed her full time role during yeah. the pandemic after years of, you know, bad internships. Congrats, Jenny. Serena there you go, Jenny. Just had like, Someone reached out to her at her job to thank her for her work. Uh, Amazing. Serena, I knew you were a baller, man. Look at wow. you, Serena. And Clara is happy to be surrounded by 64 incredible people today. I love that. that. Is so, yeah. Can we get a hashtag Basant in the chat for just creating such an amazing community? Like it blows my mind every time I tune into her live streams, the amount of kindness and support that I see always. Hashtag Basant. I'm going to type in the first one because I absolutely <laughs> love uh, Basant's work. But yeah, I just think it's important to celebrate each other more than anything with all the negativity in the world at the moment. Celebrate other people. I know sometimes a lot of environments teach us that we need to be competitive and we need to bring other people down to go up ourselves. That's right. It's very not true. You need to support other people. Those are going to be your rock in general when you are job searching or in your career. Treat everyone with kindness. That's the most important thing, right? But that brings us. Yeah. yeah and. Jim? and and I think even just on that note, like one of the things that I think we're trying to do with One Soul Thing, and I know that Basan does this extremely well, is like you lift yourself up by lifting other people up, right? And because at the end of the day, like what people fail to realize is that everyone that you help with are going to be your future helpers in the future, or are going to be your future helpers. Super, super important to be there on the long term and focus on helping others because you never know how, the, how that's going to come around and help you. Yeah, I'm getting all emotional from the comments. I'm I love everybody. That's that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but uh yeah, mental health. Uh very difficult when you are just trying to make something work in the middle of all this un like uncontrollable circumstances. How do we take care of ourselves, Jerry? How do we take care of ourselves? Now, this is a question that I'm still trying to figure out too. Um for for these people here, I'll share a very very personal story that I shared with Basant, um, and Basant's an absolute like so amazing. Um, so uh, recently, I had major 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 anxiety, right? And I think a lot of it was due to COVID, work from home, not seeing people, and so it, it was just a lot of factors. But it's made me feel like I just wasn't enough at work, right? And it just made me realize, like, man, I was on such a stride, but now this thing has done this, and I kind of dug myself in a hole, and. I spoke to a therapist for two months, right? Every week we had a chat and we had action items. And what I realized through that is that anxiety lives in the future. It doesn't live in the past. It doesn't live currently. It lives in the future. And no one knows what the future looks like. So the only way you're able to get anxiety, and if you believe that it's in the future, is because you're creating your own future in your head and you're believing it, right? And so through just a lot of conversations, that was probably the biggest, biggest takeaway that I had that, hey, I'm creating my, I'm digging myself in a, in a hole in the future of something that I don't even know is going to happen. And because of that, I'm feeling really nervous about the future because I'm worried that this is actually going to happen. But nine times out of 10, that, that never really does happen, right? And so that's that's the biggest thing that I realized and it's in, impacted my work at Consulting, impacted my work at Google, Right. And so when I, I think the biggest takeaway there is that if you realize that, Hey, you're not feeling at your hundred percent, you don't feel like you're, um, you don't feel, you don't feel good every day, then reach out to someone for help. Talk to someone like Basant, reach out to your parents, reach out to your friends, community, a therapist, right? Cause at the end of the day, mental health is so important, but it's so hard to see because you can't see it with your eyes. It's something that you have to feel. Right. And so when you feel like you're not doing enough, when you feel like you're not good enough, when you feel like you're not that your head's not in the right place, just reach out for help. Thank you, first off, so much for sharing that with us and just being vulnerable with us. And, you know, an interesting perspective and something I think about a lot is when you shared that with me, um, I thought, what could I possibly do to help Jerry, who I look up to so much? What could I possibly like give a value? And, you know, yeah. I just shared an article with Jerry about mental health and you know, right. seeking help. Exactly. Right. So, you know, sometimes value doesn't have to come from, you know, you giving something incredible to the other person. It's just a That's matter right. of caring. 
That's it's just right. a matter of caring to other people. So it has nothing to do with confidence or needing to give immense value. It's just a matter of being kind, which is why Absolutely. I mentioned it earlier. But yeah. thank you so much for sharing that with us. I see a lot of comments actually about burnout and how to take care of yourself. Do you have any tips maybe on burnout or how to take care of ourselves when we're working towards like a specific goal? Yeah, um, you could be like Jonathan Javier who just never gets burnt out. Honestly, like I, that dude is an absolute machine. Like I thought I was, I was like, I was a pretty hard worker until I met Jonathan. I was like, this guy literally lives, breathes job seekers and he cares about people so much that sometimes I'm like, like this can't be real, right? Jonathan, like, yeah, j j like that guy, each and every single one of you guys should message him and be, and just be like, like hashtag Jonathan, no burnout. Right, let message him now on LinkedIn because that dude is an absolute, absolute machine. Um, but the way that I felt like I, so to share with you guys a little bit about how my day looks, right, is uh, on an average day, I'll have meetings for Google or I'll have my Google work from about 8 a.m. to about 6 p.m. After that, I'll have dinner, I'll have maybe an hour or two of just rest, uh, maybe work out, and then I'll do my one consulting work from about 7 p.m. to about 10 p.m. And then from 10 p.m. onwards, I go on YouTube, I wind down, and I start my day all over again. My Saturdays and Sundays are typically packed with uh, 9 a.m. to about 1 p.m. meetings. And then the rest of the day, I have free. So this is a schedule that works for me because I've realized two things about myself. One, I need my mind to be continuously, continuously challenged. Um, and this just might be a sad, a sad excuse for a workaholic, but I, that just, that's just the way that I function, right? Like I love taking vacations, but I can't take vacations for more than two weeks because otherwise I just feel like, I just feel like I'm itching to just get challenged. Right. And so that's why I love investing so much time into my Google work and my consulting work. Right. And the second thing that I really appreciate or, or really like about my, or about myself is I like variability in my work. I just don't like to work on one consulting for 14 hour days. Rather, I like to work in my Google work, then I like to do my one consulting work, then I like to do my LinkedIn work, then I like to do this. And for me, I just really, really like that variability. For you guys, you just need to figure out like what is that one thing that you like and what is that preference thing that's just what keeps going, uh, keeping you motivated. Is it that you'd like to wind down with a glass of wine or maybe grape juice if you're under 21, right? Or, and you like to watch Netflix. Is it that you like to spend time with family, friends, right? Or is it that you like to cook? Just figure out what that thing is for you and make sure you incorporate that in your day. For me, it's, I like to make sure I have time to watch my YouTube of two hours of YouTube. Second, I like variability in my work. And the third thing is I like to make sure that I like the work that I'm doing. Yeah. And you know, it's so important to add that, like the things I like to do and what I do is I put it in my calendar, I book it in and I block it in Absolutely. to make sure that I do it because a lot of the time you'll say, okay, I'll do that. And then you get distracted in work, you get distracted with everything, block your calendar and put self care and self kindness in general and make sure that you take care of yourself and put in that effort. Um, the one thing I also wanted to ask about is how does one stay positive? You know, this entire year, it sometimes feels like things are just stacking up one on top of the other. And, you know, it's easy sometimes to say, like, you know, I'll stay positive in all the adversity. But if you're getting like 200 rejections, how does one stay positive? Like looking at the light at the end of the tunnel. In that <laughs> yeah. Uh, you need people like Jonathan, right? Like you need mm -hmm. people like the passants in your life, right? Like you need those people who are going to be your foundation. Um, I made a post about this maybe a month ago or a couple of weeks ago where I I told people that like, hey, like, again, like the recruiting process is an emotional one, right? And if you don't have the right, right foundations for yourself, it's just not going to work for you, right? Because at the, like there are going to be times when you're just so worn down by the recruiting process that you can't hold yourself up. And that is expected and that is okay. But what is not okay is if you feel like you have to take on that burden all by yourself. So the most actionable thing that I can recommend is have a cohort of people to just be your supporters, be your advocates, be your number one, right? Whether that's people on this, right? People like Simran, like Akshay, like Serena, Sheree, right? Like Janavi, like those people are the people who are going to be the ones to support you through those tough process. And First, you have to know and believe that it is super 
emotional and it is going to be a tough process. So make sure you just have that support system and make sure that when people reach out to you, that you give them that support. And Marilyn, thank you so much. I want to make sure I straighten out my back for this webinar. <laughs> Me just going back, straightening my back. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for the self-help, the self-care tip. That's very important. Um, right. But you know, oh man, I just had a brain fart myself. What was I saying? Um, <laughs> The one thing that I think is very, oh my God. Okay, moving on. Just moving, moving on. I on. forgot what I was trying to say. Okay. Um, ooh, I think one thing in college that happens is sometimes we forget, like we think, okay, I'm going to do A and B. And based on that, I'm going to get a 95% on the exam, right? Mm. After you start, you kickstart your career and things happen, you have all these different variables. It's not, okay, I'm going to do A and B and I'm going to get this. I might do A, B, C, D, E, N, F, and I might not still get what I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. And it's important to, I think, especially when it comes to this, to just embrace uncertainty and embrace that things aren't going to go your way all the time, right. unfortunately, but that's a part of life. And it's important that as, you know, young professionals that we kind of bypass this. It's incredibly important and something I'm still learning myself, but <coughs> it is very necessary for us, like, in general to get past that does that resonate with you as well super super spot on yeah i don't think i could have said it better myself yeah and the one thing i also wanted to ask about the final thing actually before we go to questions is comparison um especially right now with everything going on if you have a lot of circumstances you're an international student all these different circumstances how do you not compare yourself to others how do you like just be within yourself and just happy within yourself yeah so i think it's human nature to compare mm -hmm. i don't think that's ever going to go away so the best thing you can compare yourself to is yourself a year ago right mm -hmm. so one of the things i like to do um is i've been doing this for about nine years now is i have a running notepad where every time something significant happens or every time i think about it i'll just write on this notepad of just what's going on in my life right uh, who are my friends? Uh, what's my job? What are my priorities? What's top of mind for me? And I always take the time to also read back to my previous note, right? And so the what I want you guys to do, I love you put that facade on the below. Uh, I want you guys to literally just start a notepad of what are you currently feeling today? What's top of mind for you? Who are you with? What's top, uh, What's not top of mind for you, right? What don't you care about? Because you'll slowly begin to see how you're growing and compare, er, growing, and you can compare yourself to how you were before. And chances are what you're going to realize is that the Simran, the Mina, the Akshay, the Basant last year is a very, very different person than who you guys are today. And hopefully it's for the better. And even if you're, maybe even if you had a setback, then you want to reflect and say, hey, well, what caused those setbacks? Right. And so you want to really focus on comparing to yourself and really just having that tangible thing for you to say, like, yes, like this is who I was a year ago, because then that forces you to compare yourself to the other person or to to the other Jerry rather than the other people. I love that. And, you know, in our journeys in general, we tend to forget all of that information that you mentioned. How was I a year ago? My is progress sometimes seems so far away or like I, I've not accomplished anything in the last year. But yeah. That's always not true, actually. So I love that tip. And let mm -hmm. us know in the comments who's starting a notepad. Uh, but yeah, if we're going to go into questions for the next like 10 ish minutes. And in the meantime, if if you did enjoy the webinar, if you learned a lot about mental health from the incredible Jerry, just make sure <laughs> to share that with us in the comments and like on LinkedIn, write a post, share the link to the webinar, spread the love. I really love the community we have on today and everything. Yeah. So make sure you spend that out or spread that around. But let me look yeah, and, for and subscribe to Basant on the YouTube channel. Thank you. Make sure you like the video. <laughs> um, let's see. Ooh, how, actually asks, how do we not get affected mentally by people always questioning us, especially here with the job search? Um, he says people are questioning content creation and other ways of applying, mentioning there's only one way of applying, right? What do you think about that? Yeah, um, that's interesting. I would, I would be, I'd be curious to hear um, who's questioning your approach, um, because at the end of the day, like, 
I think it's it's two sided, right? Like one, you don't want to be doing the wrong things, but second, you also don't want to be narrow minded, right? So I think it's it's I, I would probably have to know the additional context, but by and large, mm -hmm. I think when I was recruiting, I would be open to anything. People would say, "Hey, yeah, go apply to five jobs into the same company." I'm like, "Okay, I'll try it," right? And then I'll, I'll A/B test it myself, mm -hmm. right? But but I would try to really ask yourself, where is this person coming from? If the person is coming from a, a, a point of, wow, I'm really just trying to help, then I'd really recommend that, hey, just have that discussion of being like, hey, like, well, what specifically do you disagree about my job process, right? This is what I'm saying. This is what I've read. Maybe there's a discrepancy in our understanding. And just feeling, but if they're not, if they're not a supporter, then you have to realize, like, what is their intent? Should I really take this seriously? Because... I've definitely have gotten my fair share of, of haters on, even on LinkedIn, like out of all platforms, they get haters on LinkedIn. Um, and they definitely have affected me for sure. But again, going back to the foundation of people like Jonathan Bassant, friends, family, you just want to make sure that you just go, go back to them to be your, your, your gut check. 100% hate on LinkedIn, y'all, not easy at all. Yeah. Um, but Joseph asked, did you get the 8K self-driving option? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joseph, you're going to have to find out. So uh, just, just come out and find out yourself. <laughs> but yeah, I did. <laughs> he, did he did visit you, so you could still come to see That's your That's right. That's right. Uh, but another awesome question from Janavi I is, love Janavi. What, are, what are some questions that people should be asking in their first couple of months on a new grad role for professional growth? I love this question. So I think what we want consulting and Pasan, we, we talk a ton about is like job search but we don't talk enough about once you get into your role what do you do from there um and so for me this question comes down to well how do you define growth for yourself mm -hmm. do you want to move up do you want to maximize compensation do you want to use this as a stepping stone for you to get somewhere else figure out what is that next goal for yourself and understand like okay this is my starting point and understand that it can change then the question is going to be, if I'm trying to optimize for moving up, for example, how do I do that? And do I see a clear path for me to do that? And if you don't see a clear path, chances are it's not because you're not understanding. It's because they, they don't have a process or they're still trying to figure it out. And so I think when you're going through the – you're trying to achieve your goals and everything, make sure that you understand where your what your next step is and – make sure you have a clear path for you to get there because if you don't chances are that's not that's not a you a you problem that's a company problem i love that and that's such good advice i will be starting my role soon so that's such good advice i need to like analyze what i want to do with myself my life yeah this year's been tough i really have to say you kind of start really questioning yourself more than anything yeah. is what I'm right especially because all the rules are kind of out the window you start to really wonder like what am i doing here yeah, but sure. I think the great thing about this year, though it's been a pretty bad year, is it, it's it makes you think a lot more about why you're doing things. When you strip away a job or you strip away all these added layers that we put on our lives, what's left of me or what else has been affecting my life or so on? But yeah, just Absolutely. something to think about. Um, let me see what. Even though you faced people who got awesome internship offers, did you still approach them and shared your feelings or need of help? What was the experience like? Yeah, great, great, great question. So the way that I approach this is, yeah, I did. And chances are people are willing, to, people on average love to talk about themselves and love to talk about their successes. And so um, if you approach from like, wow, that is so awesome. Like, how did you do it? I'd love to just learn a little bit more from you. People are will, really, really willing to be receptive to that. Um, and as long as you're genuine about it and as long as you come from a place of just like wanting to learn, wanting to grow, like people on average, I would say that they're very willing to help. That's just been my experience with that. Mm -hmm. And as Jonathan always says, use hashtags on LinkedIn, use like hiring, Google, hashtag Google, all these different mm -hmm. hashtags to find people who have new opportunities or are hiring and reach out to them. It'll change your life. Let me see. And I also just shared a spreadsheet. So in case you guys want to follow up with each other afterwards, I create a spreadsheet. Feel free to add your LinkedIn profile there. And then you guys can all connect with each other and uh, you guys can just follow up. 
Yeah. Did, did you share it right now? I seem to have a lag in my comments. I did. Maybe it doesn't share links, but I can just uh, message it to you, Basan. Yeah, and then maybe I can share it in a post or something. There, I'm, I'm not seeing as many comments as usual, which is strange, like out of everything. Hmm. Yeah, I think you'll have to share that in the comments. I think if you're not the like admin, I don't think you can share links. Mm -hmm. It happened last time. Okay. Um, Let me see if there's any other questions. One second. Serena has a question of around therapy resources. Do you see that Ooh, one? Oh, yeah, I see that. Cool. Do you have any um, cool therapy resources yet? I personally have used Lyra, uh, L Y R A, and they. I met my therapist online, and uh, they you fill out like a questionnaire, a little bit about what you're looking for, who you are, and they match you with someone. And thankfully, the first person I matched with was very, very helpful. Awesome. We are not trained professionals. We're giving out mental health advice to say, right, yeah. <laughs> please don't. Yeah. Oh, how do you? deal with recruiting burnout if so how did you overcome it that's a tricky one recruiting burnout um yeah that's a that's a tough one um i would say that just having uh just having a community again i i always go back to foundation community people that you love supporters because for me like that has been the rock for everything that i've done and it's allowed me to achieve my dreams and more. So having that community and close group of friends where you can rely on and you know that they're going to be there always, that's what I've really found to be helpful. Yeah, and I think try and distinguish between what is controllable and uncontrollable. I think this extensive, like, I need to put in 200% right mm -hmm. now comes from you trying to make up for everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Trying to focus on what you can control and also what will bring you the most impact. So usually 20% of what we do will bring out 80% results already. The rest of the 80% of work, which is a lot of time, is got, it's just going to add like another 20% into the layer. Exactly. Focus on what will give you the most impact instead of trying to perfect everything because that makes a big difference in your overall workload. Right? That's right. But exactly right. That's very important. Right. Uh if you want to completely shift a career path after a master's degree in non-technical, non-degreeing field to a technical field, plus you're an immigrant, how should I do that? Yeah, so there's a lot of moving pieces there. So uh, let me <laughs> let me break this apart and move uh, move into two pieces. The first piece of it is moving from a non-technical role to a technical role, shifting industries, and the second piece of it is recruiting as an immigrant or maybe as mm -hmm. a uh, as a non-citizen. So the first piece of it is, um, the first piece of it is, when you're transitioning roles, the biggest question that the recruiter or hiring manager is going to have in their head is, can this person do that technical job? As long as you can check the check the boxes of yes, I want to go to UX and I have a ton of, uh, I have my portfolio where I've done a ton of work in UX. Here's all the research that I've done. And um, here's here's my story of how of why my background is unique than every more unique than anyone else. Then 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 pretty much you have your story there, right? And the second piece of it, as an immigrant, um, what I would recommend is just figure out which which companies are hiring for uh, or, or offer sponsorships. And the way to do this is just go onto Google, type in like H one B company salaries. And all those companies are just gonna be just gonna be there that offer H one B and visas. Yeah, it's tough as an immigrant out here, but thank uh, you so much for your question. And you know, unfortunately, it's the end of the webinar. The hour passed by so fast. Yeah, it did. And it's 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 been so incredible to have you, Jerry. It's like such a pleasure for me, and you shared so much wisdom that's helped so many people today. So thank you so much for your time. Wondering if you have any closing remarks or things you want to share with everyone just at the end here. Closing remarks, the fact that you guys are here again on a Saturday, Sunday, morning, afternoon, or evening tells me that you care about your career, that you want to grow, and tells me that you're going to be someone who's resilient. So just believe in yourself because we do, we believe in you. The fact that you're here and you care about that means so much to you and should mean a lot to you. So that's what I'd recommend. Just keep at it. Keep grinding. It's going to be a rough ride, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. 
Yeah, and the one thing I want to say after that incredible closing remark is you are your best asset. If you push yourself down, if you take away your confidence, if you do any of these things, you are kicking your only warrior. You know, at the end of the day, me and Jerry can't come and be like, oh, she's fallen or he's fallen. We need to, like, go in. You are your only, like, piece, your only chess piece. You need to empower yourself instead of That's putting right. yourself down because if you do that you're losing your only asset the only thing that you can work with and that's the exactly. only person who can make a difference in your career and right. a difference in general like in your life so make sure you are not kicking yourself down you are empowering yourself more than that's anything right. and yeah uh so happy to have had this webinar it was such an incredible group today like i love right. the empowering and positive energy uh, and yeah, make sure you say thank you to Jerry in the comments. I see a lot of people already doing that. Jerry, you're incredible. Thank you so much thank for all guys. that you do. Thank you, Jonathan, who is not here, but is in spirit. <laughs> and um, yeah, I hope everyone has a great rest of your Saturday. All right. Thanks, guys, for your time. Thank you, Passan, for hosting this, of course. And as always, you can find us on LinkedIn. So we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.